What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 96 of The Road to Glory. And yeah, I am alive. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, there's a, there's a few of you who probably think I've died or something because sub boxes don't work and you didn't see the video saying I'm going on a break. I am now back from my break. Today is my birthday. It's been exactly a month since my last kind of proper upload. Uh, it's been nice just to have a little bit of a break, but I am back now, and we are going to finish what we started here with FC United and Manchester. I am determined more than ever to make this a success and win the Champions League, beat Sir Alex Ferguson at his own game in terms of beating him in the Hall of Fame and ultimately become the best and biggest club in Manchester. So, yeah, guys, uh, just a quick apology if you've missed the content. I am alive. If you're new around here, hello. I'm Jack, work the space, um, and this this is the FC United and Manchester Challenge. Um, so basically, if you're new around here, just a quick intro thing. FC United and Manchester, we've taken them from the ninth tier of England, as you can see with this graph on screen. Um, we took them to, oh, was it the, I don't know what tier we were actually in, I'm getting confused now. But basically, we did six promotions, so we did seven tiers actually, I can't count. Um, but we are now in the Premier League, and I got a bit bummed out with this series because we were kind of struggling. However, uh, during my time away, I played a month through of this season just this week, and um, yeah, we're a year on from when the last video was, guys. So this episode, we're going to be covering the last season just gone. Um, so, first things first, a look at where we finished in the table this year. And we finished fifth. It was a really convincing fifth in the end. Um, we finished four points in fifth. We guarantee ourselves Europa football this year coming up, which is the first time we've guaranteed ourselves European football in three years, I believe. Um, yeah, we finished fourth in 2022. It's now 2025. Um, our process, kind of progress in the Premier League, we came up in 2020 and finished ninth. Made a little bit of a kind of step backwards and finished twelfth. From out of no nowhere, finished fourth in our third season in the league. And from there, we've lingered around mid table for a number of years. And now this year, I managed to get myself fifth place European football. Um, and it's looking good for us. Finally, it, it is really looking good. So. Um, I don't know what to cover first. I suppose we'll look at the fixtures. Uh, so looking at these fixtures across the month, I'm obviously not going to cover every fixture for the year. Um, but in terms of our domestic kind of competitions, a quick look at them. In the League Cup, we reached the fourth round before losing to Man City 2-3 away. Uh, sorry, 2-3 at home. Um, they were the stronger side, you'd have to say, in terms of their actual squad. On the day, we turned up and played better. A tad unlucky to get knocked out in the... Uh, kind of round that we did um, but ultimately it adds to my resume of uh, not really succeeding in domestic competitions on this save and this was also kind of I guess confirmed by our exit in the FA Cup fourth round to what on our save is a very weak Everton side uh, on the day uh, they did play better than us they won 1-0 looking at the table they did just scrape away from relegation in the Premier League and I mean looking at the Premier League 32 points and surviving is a very low amount and this is kind of testament to how tight it was in the mid table um, but as you'll see as I cover the league forms in a second uh, kind of our performances as a whole in the league uh, towards the end of the season really saw us st stay successful so now that we've covered that, just a quick look at our Premier League form. You can see here um, that obviously there's a, there's a mixed bag of results, but the general consensus was we had a steady start with a few draws, a really, really rough patch in the middle where we struggled against some big sides. And then from there, uh, blotchy it would have to be said until kind of um, the end of March time. And from there, we really stomped on and we went unbeaten in the last eight games of the season. So that was really good to see. In that time, we also played Liverpool, uh, Manchester United, uh, amongst a few of the fairly big sides like Queen's Park Rangers and West Ham. So that was a really good kind of set of results to get at the end of the year. I am kind of alluding the fact that we did indeed lose 5-1 to Man City before that run. But nevertheless, it was a really good run of form at the end of the season. Some highlight results of this year. Um, obviously, in the last episode, I did the 2-2 draw against Arsenal. That was a really good result at the Emirates. Uh, from there, a few other good results to come out are um, kind of, I guess, the 3-2 defeat, as I mentioned before, at Man City. And then only losing 1-0 at Stamford Bridge was another half-decent result, to be honest. Um, shows that we are making progress as a club and we're able to compete against these kind of sides. 2-2 uh, draw at White Hart Lane as well. You know, there's some pretty standard good results here. Unfortunately, we slipped up against lesser sides, losing to the likes of Wolverhampton Wanderers and Reading, which is kind of, I guess, it's, it's a bit of a pain if you ask me. 
Uh, 2-0 win at home to Liverpool was another really good result. Um, a game which we dominated and that really has been a pattern of our season as I'll come on to in a second when I cover the tactics. But uh, prior to the 5-1 defeat to Man City, we did beat Tottenham Hotspur 3-0 at home. And looking at the East stats, you can really see how we dominated the game in terms of creating chances. This year, I really did fiddle with my tactics before getting something I was really happy with towards the end of kind of February time and sticking with it. And although there was a little bit of a kind of patchy period during the kind of initial, uh, I guess, application of this new tactic, it did eventually come good for us. And as I mentioned, we really did go on a good run of form at the end of the game. So talking about the tactics before we move into the squad, this is the tactic which I've been running with this year. It's a free, well, yeah, a free, or maybe a 5 free one one I don't really know how to break this down, to be honest, because it's kind of, you've got the free centre-backs, and I'll move on to who's who in a second. You've got the anchor man who just adds a little bit more defensive coverage to the free at the back. And then uh, you've got the wing backs, who in this case are Luke Shaw and Alexander Nazarov, um, you know, pushing up the wings and adding the width that we don't have within kind of at places higher up the field. And then uh, in terms of the rest of our squad, uh, you know, box to box midfielder, advanced playmaker. Peyrard playing just off the lone striker, which is Alfredo Senior in this case. And then for strategy, I've been playing attacking most of the time. The exception's been against clubs like Manchester United, who we played um, in the last game of the season where I switched to counter. So anyway, moving on to the squad itself, before I cover individual player performances and stuff, there are a few names missing from the squad and I will go over them in this transfer history area. So, uh, my memory is a little rough as to who I have brought in when, but I'm going to attempt to remember as best as I can who's come in uh, since um, the end of the last transfer window, which was last episode. So, uh, looking at it, a few names have gone out and one of which was Sergei Samper. Uh, Sampo has gone to Liverpool for 15 million, which I thought was a decent amount of money to get for him. I signed him for 6 million uh, three years ago when he was 27 and really in his prime. Uh, since then, he's played okay for us, and believe me, he's a good player. However, 15 million is a good little tidy sum to get for this player. I mean, don't get me wrong, I haven't really replaced him with the equal quality, but what I have done is it's opened up slots in the midfield for my younger players who have the potential to be better than him to come into the squad, try their hand at things, and really kind of shine, I suppose, with a kind of void there left with him going out. We also had uh, Al Matnani, uh, Tarek. This guy came in on a Bosman at the start of this season. Uh, didn't play for us at all. Uh, really just a fringe player. But managed to get 3.5 million for him for, from Derby. Good little transfer there f uh, for him. Gary Quirk also went to Derby. This guy was a good in England international when I signed him from Everton. Unfortunately, since then, he's really struggled as a whole to uh, make an impact in my team. Uh, originally coming in as a right midfielder to kind of fill the hole that was made for him when I switched to 4 4 2 last season. It didn't work out for us in this year, obviously, with the new tactics and not playing a right midfielder. The only real role for him was up front. And because of, um, I guess, the kind of strength that I have in my own squad up front, there really wasn't a gap for him, especially switching to the lone forward kind of role within the tactics. So to get 12 million for him was good. Um, that said, he did come for the club for slightly more, I do believe. Yeah, 15 million he came in for. So disappointing to get a little bit of a loss there. But at the same time, making the money back was a good thing. And then for two very big transfers. First one, Bocau. Going to Atletico Madrid for £41 million. Pounds. This this is probably going to raise a few eyebrows as to why I've sold him. Uh, Bocau has been very whingy <laughs> for the last two years. Obviously, I signed him the year I qualified for the Champions League. So he was clearly expecting, oh, this club's going to kind of become a standard Champions League side. Obviously, that wasn't the case with us. We have struggled. And um, as a result, he wanted to move on to get to a bigger club. Uh, I had a number of offers from clubs within England. I held out and decided... Despite getting a £45 million bid from Manchester United, which I turned down, I then ended up accepting a £41 million bid from Atletico Madrid. Uh, I signed him for £46.5 million with a lot of add-on clauses at the end of every month. The last one of which is going to be paid off at the start of this coming season. And that will mean that we start to actually make money from the future transfers of players that are Got, that have already left the club, if that makes sense. So when I signed a few players, I signed them on monthly instalments in the future. And um, it's kind of been crippling the finances slightly, uh, bringing in these players. But with the likes of Bockhouse payments now stopping, and because a few players that I've sold, such as Sampa, uh, have the monthly kind of instalments themselves, it's going to mean that our finances are a lot more balanced in the grand scheme of things. 
Looking at his performances he did make at the club, obviously here for four years, a very solid player all the way around. However, it has to be said, in his last kind of half a season this year at the club, he really wasn't that valuable or an asset. I mean, a 7.15 average rating is nothing to stand out, if you ask me. And they were all starts. And within that time, he only got really got an 81% pass uh, completion ratio and only getting five assists really didn't contribute too much to the side and so to get 40 million for him I thought was a pretty decent sum of money I know people aren't going to agree with that one but just one of those things and last but not least I sold Pablo uh, this guy Brazil international centre back came in on a Bosmud a number of years ago to us really has been a first choice uh, centre back for a number of years for us however it kind of dawned on me that he was kind of he was he was third choice centre back and he had a value of about 5 million which uh, my club wasn't that great. You'll see now, obviously, he has a value of 15.5 million in his stats. They're not anything too crazy, if you ask me. But he was sat on the bench a lot of games, and I kind of realised, you know, with eight clubs interested, hang on a minute, I might be able to get a little bit of money for this guy. So, with his value of 5 million, I offered him for 20 million, and Bayern and Atletico both came a knock in. Uh, let both of them talk to him. He's gone to Bayern. Really struggled there, as you can see, at the start of this year uh, for them since he moved in January. Uh, I kind of hope he's a, he's a success, obviously. He's been at the club for five years and has really been a valuable asset to the side. But at the same time, it was good to get that £20 million in for him. So, with those kind of players sold and a number of players out on loan, you'll see we actually raised a total of uh, £139 million this year, which is a lot. However, when you see a lot of these players on the ins, you'll begin to realise that although some of these players have gone out, I have tried to kind of fill the voids that they've left behind. So, here we have Christophe Auvray, a uh, really good French goalkeeper, uh, 17 years old, French and uh, 21 international, a uh, good solid goalkeeper looking for him to have a good future at the club. We have... Um, Tangai Horn, this guy quality centre back. Uh, now France is uh, well third choice centre back. Kind of fills the role that Pablo uh, had at the club and really fills the void that we had. Looking at their comparison, you really can't see it too clearly. Um, if I change it to attributes, you'll see that Horn is superior in nearly every way. All the greens represent where uh, Horn is better. So you can see he's a lot better player. Uh, Horn did cost me a little bit of money. He came in for £22.5 million. Pounds, so pretty much all the money that went uh, came in for Pablo went out on him. But a good little transfer nevertheless. Alongside him, another French player to come to us was um, Gregory Pereira. This guy, really solid centre mid, uh, came in for £22.5 million as well. Another French player who I'm hoping is going to one day become a French international. Hopefully going to fill the role of Bocal very nicely. His 19 passing and 16 creativity combined with his 18 first touch really make him a player which I believe in the coming years is going to be really solid for us and more than fill the role that Bocal had. Um, I don't really want to compare him to Bocal because he simply isn't in the same league. However, Bocal was 27. This guy's 22. He's got a good potential kind of future. And his mentals are very solid as well, which is a good thing to see at this kind of young age that he has. So, another good signing there. We also have um, Augustin Rodriguez who is a Spanish international right winger. I'm actually playing him in centre mid as an advanced playmaker. He's been a really solid player for us since he came from Chelsea. Looking at his history, you can see he really came from the Real Madrid Academy before making a number of moves, uh, I guess, around. You'll see that he went to Chelsea two years ago for £15.5 million. Uh, not really had the biggest impact ever there, and I've managed to sign him. And so far this year, looking at his average rate, you can already see he's started to build upon kind of I guess his good start at the club and I'm hoping that next season he's going to be another really solid player for us. So they're the main transfers. There are a few regents here. I'll only mention a few, but here we have Jordan Elena, uh, the 15-year-old. And I might want to point out he's just turned 15. So he's basically a 14-year-old. But uh, this guy, really solid player. Um, unbelievable raw talent, has real natural skill. Going to be plonking him in my reserves, letting him develop. But this guy, keep an eye out on him. You know, three years down the line, I'm pretty sure he'll be challenging for a first team slot. Uh, if he can develop as well as kind of, I believe he can. A few other players here. Um, we have Carl Klaus here. Uh, really solid player. Come from the um, Tottenham Hotspur Academy on Regen Day. Uh, 221 caps, 121 goal already at the age of 16 for England. Another really good player for the future. Uh, we have Ellis Boyles here, another really good English striker. Um, and then Clint, uh, Clint McGiven, uh, another solid English 
young player uh, tried to really add to the academy again this year and i'm hoping that going forward those players are really going to make an impact for us i mean you look at our reserves now it, it's full of talent it's just a case of waiting to see what develops out of it a uh, little pro tip if you don't know if you've got really good youth players who have kind of got four to five star ability always stick them in your reserves if your reserves isn't too full and they'll play there because uh, the, there's a significant difference in the kind of level of football between the youth football and the reserves and they will kind of develop better uh, being exposed to reserve team football as opposed to the youth football so you'll see here i have a really good kind of good selection of young players to pick from a few of my favorite ones at the moment coming through rico francis here this guy came from aston villa um at the start of last season he's a very solid striker a uh, striker really solid anchor man in the making uh just really got to let him develop and let him have his time but already playing in the england and under 21s regularly at the age of 17 good signing alexandre roger 9 under 21 caps for france another real raw talent this guy developed a lot this year if he continues he'll be challenging for first team football soon i mean that's the thing my reserve team is stacked with these regions i'm just going to flick through some of them just so you can kind of see the talent that we have coming through here um unbelievable players a lot of young regions you know that i've snapped up that have been at the club a few years now and you'll see they all are very <laughs> well they're all very good and i mean yoan carey or owen carey here before someone slates me for saying it wrong um i want to try and give this guy some first team football this year however my scouts are kind of implying that he may well have hit his kind of potential um too soon if that makes sense like he isn't going to improve much more than this i'm hoping he will do uh and i hope that i can give him some first team football but obviously playing the lone striker at the moment it's going to be tough for him to break into the first team side looking at top performers this year alfredo senior top goal scorer for us came in on a bosman free transfer from i want to say villarreal it was villarreal this year 34 appearances 21 league goals absolutely solid player for us and he's been pe um backed up well by jean christophe periard um who is another good player this guy 17 years old french international now seven appearances for france five goals at the age of 17 absolutely unreal player developed so well this year again uh, i know i was very excited about this guy when he came in i'm even more excited about him now guys this is his second year at the club developed insanely you know that exposure i've been sticking with him in the first team uh, playing off alfredo and he's really kind of paid me back well other goal scorers jeco's played well again as always um and then Jao Jose, uh, another product of the academy, came in a number of years ago, but he's been really solid. Certainly worth more than the £1.8 million I paid for him when he first came to the club. Going to be sticking with this guy as well. And I, I mean, look at the stats. He's developed well and come out of nowhere this year. And that's pretty much been the story of this. And I'm really hoping that our young players can continue to do well. In terms of top performers, Glenn Stewart tops it, although he's not really played too regularly because of the kind of... I guess new centre backs coming in and me trying to get the young players playing well. I mean, Glenn Stewart's hit his potential now. He's never going to improve much more than what he is now, and he is the fifth best centre back in the club. But when he does play, he's a uh, he. You know, he he's there turning up for you. And he, I mean, this is now his thirteenth season at the club, I believe. May maybe slightly less, but either way, insane player for the club. Well worth the seventy thousand pound I paid for him all those years ago. Other top performers are also centre-backs. Tangai Horn, obviously the young centre-back who came in in January, really proven his worth to the club. David Gauthier came in last year. Uh, partners Hor at the, uh, Horn. Horn at the back, not Hor. <laughs> at the back. This guy, another really solid centre-back. Uh, another French man as well, and I'm hoping this guy will partner Horn at centre-back in a few years for the French international side. I mean, if you look at their centre-backs, they're fairly old, you know, you've got um, 30 year old Zuma and uh, 30 year old uh, Dumbia. So I'm really hoping that an uh, opportunity will open up for my centre backs to get some international first team football there. Uh, other top performers, uh, we've got Perard, uh, Pereira, obviously the French centre mid who came in alongside Horn in January. Uh, Alfredo Fredo Jr. has had a good first year at the club as well. This guy came in on a, on a Bosman uh, from Real Madrid. This guy, you know, friend, a former Spanish international, he kind of lost his way uh, within the first team setup. However, he is now starting to get back into the first team 
uh, for Spain. Currently sits on their bench, but he's only 20, and he's a very good, high-quality centre-back. And I do believe he will develop uh, kind of going forward at the club, and he really can do a job for us. But, I mean, that is the squad. Looking at our start at 11, in goal we do have Pavlenko, uh, good Ukrainian centre-back, uh, centre goalkeeper. God, I can't even remember who plays where now. That's how long it's been. Uh, this guy was not cheap when he came in last year, however, really made an impact and really made himself a uh, definite first-team goalkeeper. Uh, but at the back we have Horn, Gauthier and Alfredo, who I've already covered. Uh, right wing back we have Nazarov. Uh, young right wing back obviously getting older a bit now but really starting to mature into a really fine player for us uh, Anchorman I'm sticking with Matty now German international at the age of 19 another kind of one of the products of the youth academy he's been here for a few years uh, three years now came in for 9.5 million pounds which at the time was a big gamble but he really had raw ability I still do believe he has that and I will be starting him as Anchorman next year uh, left back we have Luke Shaw Guy speaks for himself, solid in real life, a real good prospect for England in the future and on this save he's more than achieved that. At centre mid we have Pereira and Dzeko, then up front we have Peyrard who's the French international at the age of 17 and Alfredo Senior the top goalscorer. So that's pretty much the side, uh, you'll see that we have a fairly small squad now, however with the reserve team being so packed with kind of good youth prospects I can always call upon them to really do a job for our team and I mean looking at our reserves you can see we pretty much have a squad for the future made of all the players with potential abilities of four star or above um i really can't stress how well this is all coming together as a whole kind of this whole academy is really beginning to take shape and really part of my long-term plan for the club looking at the finances quickly they've been better they've been worse i can't see myself getting much money to spend in the summer but i really don't feel like that's needed anymore with us finishing fifth this year that is my target for this next year and i'm really hoping that with the continued development of my young players coming forward they'll answer the already strong squad and it won't be a problem trying to i guess re replicate the success we've had in the league this year so that's that guys um just a quick look at who did win the league. It was Manchester City. Manchester United came second. Then Chelsea and Arsenal getting the other two Champions League spots. We finished fifth above Liverpool and Tottenham, which is really good to see. A good sign of progress that we've made as a team. Looking at the player stats for the league, uh, you can see that Alfredo Senior came fourth in terms of top goal scorers. Um, tied with Carlos Lyon too, and this save is probably England's best player, absolutely unreal player. I would one day dream of signing this guy, however, he's a bit too old now, and I think by the time I can realistically buy him, it'd probably be too late in his career. But I mean, that he's the only real play, player to feature there. In terms of team stats... Um, just looking at them real quick, you'll see that we topped the form table with our late form going into the end of the season. Home form's been solid as it was our away form. Uh, looking at average attendance, you'll see that as always we are near the bottom with only 11,000 people turning up to see us. However, uh, we've also had a, well, a half decent showing of 89% uh, capacity, which I'm hoping is going to rock it. And it's kind of weird because within Football Manager, its success really dramatically increases your attendances. And because I've not won anything domestically, and with me never winning kind of any cup... Uh, my kind of fan base hasn't grown as soon as you win the league once and i was talking to omar Merkez and predicts about this with his chester save as soon as you win the league once you will see that you know there becomes a need for a new stadium especially when you're in these smaller stands but that's pretty much it look at the salary per year we're now seventh in that which is not too surprising but um I guess considering how little gate receipts we get, it might be to some people. Uh, a lot of kind of our finance comes from me selling on players that we don't need anymore and was kind of illustrated with me. I think the difference between the players that I sold and the players that I bought in was something like 40 million this year. In fact, no, it was nearer 60 million. So that gives you an idea of how much money I made just from transfers this year. Also allowed me to improve the facilities, which is a good thing. Looking at our transfer spend for this year, you'll see uh, we were one of few clubs to make money and make a lot more money than a lot of other clubs in terms of selling players. And despite that, we still made progress as a club in moving up the league. So I guess that's a really good sign to see the fact that we didn't buy anyone really this year and didn't kind of spend big. But we did make progress as a team simply by allowing our younger players to develop and play a little bit more first team football. 
So I think that is everything now, guys. Honestly, this has just been a really long kind of recap episode for you guys, letting you know about the season that you've kind of missed that I've played through while I'm away. Uh, the regular uploads are going to be resuming on my channel. That said, I am at home on really crap internet, and I am going on holiday in mid-August time. So my plan is to aim for three uploads a week, uh, just because the internet's really slow uploading and stuff, and it becomes a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, obviously, episode 100's coming up soon, and I really don't know what I'm going to do for that. So if you have any suggestions, Suggestions, let me know. I'm thinking I might organise a network game with maybe another YouTuber for it We're using this squad. Uh, just for something a little bit different for 100 episodes. Maybe even ask uh, Omar Merkis and Predicts if he wants to jump over on my channel and do something. Uh, I think it'll be really cool just to play against his Chester team who have already kind of they'd be on the stage that I'm at in terms of struggling to get in the Champions League because he's finished that save now. It's an awesome save actually. And I know I've shouted it out before, but if you haven't already, go check it out. Type in the Chester mission on YouTube or um, Merkism Predicts, and you'll find that. He's a really cool guy. I get on with Omar well. We talk a lot outside of kind of playing FM, and he's a swell chap. Um, but other than that, guys, I am pretty much done now. I'm, I don't want to ramble on for the next minute, although it's kind of a bummer, because in FM videos, I can't really talk too much about where I've been and what I've been up to as much as I'd like to. Maybe I'll do a separate video just rambling. I don't think many people would watch it, though. So, <laughs> oh, God, this rambling stuff that I'm doing now just reminds me of the good old days. Um, so, uh, let's just end this. How do you end a video? I don't know. Guys, thank you for watching. Your support is really appreciated. I'm really glad that you guys stuck around. If you're new around here and you've watched until this point, well, you, sir, are a legend for putting up with me for that long. Other than that, guys, it is me, Jack. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you've enjoyed me being back. It is my birthday today, so write happy birthday in the description if you've got to this bit, or the comments, not description. Just write it. Just wish me a happy birthday. That'll be cool. And other than that, guys, I will see you in a bit. It's me, Jack, and I'm out, guys.